Hi. I wanted to talk a little bit today on this video about uh, moving the horse and getting real softness out of the horse. And a lot of people don't understand how they can really get a horse responsive to the lightest and softest suggestion. And I think that's really the goal of a lot of riders, regardless of what discipline we ride. It's just that nice, flowing, easy, soft communication with the horse between rider and horse. That's when you have real harmony. And you can use ground exercises to actually build that. Everything that we do on the ground has a crossover to what happens under saddle. So I want you know, any exercises you see me show on the ground, there's always going to be an application down the road to how this could help you with your riding work. And also, it doesn't matter what discipline you're riding, English, Western, whatever you want to ride. So um, when you're working with a horse on the ground, it's actually a lot of times easier to build rapport with that horse in a lot of the work you do preceding getting on. You know, I do a lot, a lot of groundwork with my horses before, sometimes at Liberty, sometimes online. You see I have this horse on a 22-foot line. Uh, this is a sort of mid-length training line. You know, you have your 12-foots, your 14-foots. Uh, you also have um, some uh, extra long ones. Some people work with 44-foot lines. But to start with a lot of basic work, it's easiest to work with between a 12 to 22-foot line. So that's what I'm working with here. And you'll actually notice that I have just a plain leather halter on this horse. And I'm using this boy because he's big. And he's a draft horse. He's a percheron. And I bet everyone who's looking at him thinks, He's probably hard to move. Look at the size of him. He's a big, heavy looking horse, right? So I thought, what better horse to use to show how light and how soft you can get a horse uh, off of a very, very light signal. So you'll see also I don't have a stick. And I haven't done the work that I'm doing with this horse today until today. So. I want to always try to use a horse that is pretty fresh and a little bit raw. I've actually been riding this horse for a few years now, but um, I've done very minimal um, specific groundwork with him. I've done a little bit with him, but um, you know, mostly we've done a lot of mounted work. So I want to show that we can get a horse like this with just really minimal suggestions and we're going to also think about the parts of the body that we want to move. You know, if you look at a horse in terms of some simple areas, we can suggest the horse move that area with intention and just focusing on that spot and creating. A lot of people will use the word pressure, and pressure is a good literal term. Sometimes we're giving implied pressure which means that if I imply in front of his nose, he takes a step backwards, right? Now, how light and soft was that backup? So I suggested to him with just my fingers, maybe he would like to take a step backwards right in front of his muzzle. And he thought, okay, I would like to move backwards. And I immediately rewarded him by stopping that when he did it, okay? So right there was a pretty good indication of how light this horse is, right? And he's a smart horse, but he's also got a little bit of attitude. He's definitely, I call him the big pony. So you uh, look at him and I think, you know, sometimes he gets a bit of a pony attitude. And any of you who have had ponies know what I mean when I say pony attitude. Very food oriented, likes to drag you around sometimes and uh, definitely has his own ideas about things. So let's talk about implied pressure, which to me is like a suggestion to the horse. Implied pressure to me means that I really am not touching the horse unless absolutely necessary. So implied pressure would be just like what I did. 
Now watch how I just suggest. Hands up, he sees it. It starts to move in this area a little more. He's thinking about it. Okay, there. Now did you see the progression? He thought about it and then he backed. Now if I wanted to even split hairs, I should have rewarded him when he thought about it. But even I was a little slow in my timing there. So I just want to make that point. The other areas of the horse I can put implied pressure on is the shoulder and the hip. So right where that cowlick is on this horse is a nice area where we can focus in tension and we can cause the horse to move the back end sideways. We're not talking about forward motion here, we're talking about sideways motion here. We're talking about taking that left foot and having him step across his other foot and move his hip that way, independent of the front end. So there's full sideways movement and there's independent movement of the hind and front. So usually we start to address each body part one at a time because that's just simpler for a lot of people to understand. So if we break down the horse's body into different parts that we can move, we can string it all together and we can sort of start to move in a flow at a certain point which creates lunging, which creates lateral movements, so teaching the horse to go sideways on the ground, teaching the horse to uh, turn on the haunches on the ground, and also teaching that horse to rock back on his hocks. So anyone who knows anything about dressage or reining knows that if I can get that horse to pivot on his front end on the ground, I've already set up a foundation for a movement that's going to be done under saddle. Also, if I can get him to pivot on his hind end, which means the hind end stays still and the front end turns, we're setting up for a turn on the haunches and a reining spin. So, as I said, you can always link everything we do on the ground to future riding exercises. And it is my personal opinion that if you teach a horse something on the ground without tack and without all the gear, he is going to retain and absorb the lesson with much more confidence and ability than he would if you try to teach it to him under saddle. A lot of people don't like to spend a lot of time on groundwork. They like to just get on a horse and go. And that's, that's not the way I like to come at it. I like to spend a lot of time on the ground communicating to my horse what's going to be expected of him before I get on. And in that aspect, by the time I actually do swing a leg into the saddle, that horse is got everything figured out that he's going to know and the only thing he has to even think about is getting used to doing it while I'm on him. And how much easier is that? He's like, I already know this stuff. Now you're just telling me from the saddle what to do. So he's got a lot more confidence. He's a lot less likely to freak out about it, buck, get nervous, all that kind of stuff.